Good morning. Welcome home to Mailer's Landing. I'm Sue. This is Mike. He's hanging out today. And we are here in Growing Zone 6B in New England. And today, today is Silly Tricks with Not We. So we went out back and we bought, uh, bought we cut down <laughs> some, uh, some nice fat uh, knotweed stalks. Um, so we looked for ones that were less than a foot long. Um, and in the future, we're definitely gonna find fatter ones because the thin ones are a nightmare to try to, try to peel. Um, but now we're going to make some sweet pickles from them. So come on along. <laughs> right now, we're cutting a knotweed to uh, pickle, we're doing a sweet pickle with coriander seed, mustard seed, uh, star anise, and I brought over some lychee vinegar to oh. try and mix with the apple cider vinegar, see how that works. Uh, so best to cut in about four inch pieces. Um, I've been peeling away leaves. And once we're done with uh, getting all of this stuff into the colander, we are going to go back and peel off that rough membrane on the outside. I gotta say though, I really like the speckles, like the, the colors of these Super shoots pretty. are beautiful, right? Do you think that's the season? Because all the so tiny ones are red red. I have no idea. So many extra steps just to get one. So are the tops inedible, just the stems? Um, by the research that I've done, um, the leaves and the um, the, t the tips especially have a super concentration of that citrusy flavor, so it can be a little bit overpowering mm -hmm. and astringent. So it's not that you can't eat it, it's just not the choice part of the, of the plant. You said astringent, and the first thing I thought of was I want to poop it. <laughs> I wonder if like a could. rhubarb wine almost. You, you oh, might be able to do something like that. Yeah. Rhubarb so, Mike, you were telling us this tastes. It, it's gonna come out tasting like a rhubarb. Yeah, it uh, it has a a very tart citrusy flavor. Oh yeah, it's not as earthy as I thought it would be. It's, no, it's really bright and sharp. Okay. It is astringent. It's really drying at the end. Like the aftertaste. Hmm. It tastes just like rhubarb. Uh, I think we're gonna get maybe four jars out of these. That's not bad. No, not bad. I mean, that was what? Like half an hour in total to pick and then peel? So, yeah. yeah, not bad. Really not terrible. Mm -mm. Let's see how this works though, because we're gonna have that one, we're gonna do one jar with the lychee apple cider as a, mm. as a uh, test batch. Ooh. Um, and we'll do the, the rest of the jars as per recipe. Gone. So what are we doing here with the, the spices? You've got so many good ones. So I'm thinking about doing a quick dry toast on the oven first, on the stove first, before um, putting the vinegar in. Um, mostly to just kind of get them nice and fragrant and, uh, and all uh, active before we put it in. So are they going, the, the spices are going to go into the brine? Correct. Okay, got it. So literally all we're going to be doing with this is toasting it until we can smell it. At that point, it'll be ready. And this is, I see star anise, coriander. And allspice. What are you going to do about it? And then there was... When this is ready, we're going to switch it over to the pot. We'll add the apple cider vinegar and then... After we ladle that into the first two jars. Oh, we're going to add the salt and sugar too. Oh, right. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> uh, after we ladle that into the first two jars, then we will add the um, lychee cider into the last batch to cook a little bit longer. Be there. Is it still lychee? Is it still lychee? Just have to dissolve this until it's clear. That's what I'm thinking too. So suddenly, like in just moments, it just suddenly went clear in there. 
And so I'm going to assume that that's the point at which you know it's ready. It works on the 4th of July. What do they do with it? <laughs> so you're getting the next batch ready, right? I don't know I what am. they did with the batch. I just saw the storage. Half apple cider vinegar and like, half lychee. We had that on fruit straight up, and it was fantastic. Especially if they pick up like mm. homemade ones. Mm. Okay, so now we are going to carefully ladle our vinegar mixture on top. Our hot brine. Our hot brine. And since we're not going to be water bath processing these, these are quick pickles that happen in the fridge. We don't have to worry too much about headspace. Exactly. Oh, you know what? It's floating. It's not gonna. You're not gonna get it underneath. Oh. Ah, ah. Oh. oh. It's happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> this really feels like a losing battle. What's up? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the lychees. Is there enough, Brian? You think? No, oh, yeah. Oh, good. And we adjusted the sugar on this one. We did. Put half as much sugar because of the lychee vinegar is very sweet to begin with. The lychee one, I'm gonna go grab um, a Sharpie. Yep. This is Good timing. Thank you, Dixie. These are some pretty jars. They really are. Pickled and not weed. Thanks for coming along with us on the foraging to table journey. How's that? Okay. All right. We'll catch you soon. Take care. Bye. We are about six days out. Mm -hmm. These have been in the refrigerator. And, uh, oh, they smell really good. So Bill and I are going to find out what these are like. You got a little squishier. Mm? All right. Mmm, you really get a blast of that anise. What even is this? It's like It's like pickle. Li licorice pickles. Yeah, it's pickle candy. We're eating the enemy. Our sworn enemy is the knotweed. Mm. That is really candy-like. Mmm. That is very strange. Okay, so... It's not bad, it's just different. See, I'm trying to figure out what it would go well with. It's bright and citrusy, but you can definitely taste the addition of the anise. So, it's like the onions that I make with that, um, with that roast. Hmm. It's sweet and it's savory and salty at the same time. I might want to try this with like chopped up as a side for maybe a chicken. Just as an addition, like a fruity, sweet addition to the chicken. I'd like to try try this again without the anise. You don't like the licorice as much as I do. I don't like the, do. the licorice as much as you do. It, it's mm. overriding. It feels like it's it's dominating the flavor a bit much. I mean, it's good. It's, I like yes. that though. I really like how it's it's front. Yeah. With that. Huh. 
super interesting. I don't know what I expected, but that is not what I expected it to taste like. Me either. I th and, and I tasted it raw. I thought it would be... I don't know why I thought it would be more earthy. Raw, it didn't taste earthy at all. It's all bright, citrus and high end. And it's weird because it looks floppy. It's not, though. But it's got a crunch to it. Yeah, it... Oh, it's only floppy at the node, right? You know what this tastes like? What? Those spiced apples I made a few years ago. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Hmm. Might do this again. It's not like we're lacking for non-weed. The enemy. Eat the enemy. Uh.